we're gonna talk about fire broker commissions and what's going on. I actually have an appraiser friend that just sent me a text last night and basically said that 80% of condos could be obsolete. We had Surfside, the collapse, right? And because of the collapse, some condos are getting $150,000 assessments. As soon as I get the listing, immediately. It's always an important thing to do when buying a condo is to ask for the last 12 months of minute meetings. What I'm saying is that nothing's really changed except for the fact. More paperwork. That there's more paperwork. Did the MLS disappear? No, we okay. have MLS, but we can't put the commission on it, which is the dumbest, what's the difference? What's the difference? It's still negotiable. Here's the bottom line. Commission has always been negotiable. A lot of people are saying, well, I heard I don't have to, I don't have to pay a commission. Some people say it's against the law to pay a buyer's agent a commission. I'm like, no, it's not. Welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. With over 20 years of real estate experience and selling over 150 homes a year, Laura Sanders is the number one REMAX agent in the state of Florida for 2021. Join us each week as we discuss how to make money through buying and flipping homes to renting versus selling and everything in between. To, to join the conversation, call in live 888-994-994. 4995 Studio A. Hi everyone and welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders and I am your host Laura Sanders. Camera's Every on. week we talk about something that will help you make a little money, save a little money, or maybe just navigate the crazy little world that we live in. This week we're just going to shoot the about real estate. <laughs> a lot going on in the real estate world right now. I have Freddie here with me and Dawn and we're going to talk about buyer broker commissions and what's going on well let's first ask the, the question the elephant in the room is there inventory for anything that happened that we can discuss those commissions what do you mean is there any inventory we can discuss what is there are, are houses back on the market are they selling condos what so I actually have an appraiser friend that just sent me a text last night and basically said that 80% of condos could be obsolete could be what the didn't hell say that, that it would be and i didn't click on to read the entire article obsolete well here's well here's what i think the problem is we had surfside the collapse right and because of the collapse some condos are getting one hundred and fifty thousand dollar assessments i don't know about you but like i have friends that are retiring That's and crazy. they have about 175 to two hundred thousand dollars in their reach you know you know in their retirement right like how are you going to give a hundred and fifty thousand dollar assessment now when you buy a place the assessments are supposed to be set to you know that they're coming or not so funny you should say that i just got a call from a client um we sold the condo back in 2023 now i can't recall there was we have an addendum to the contract that is for condos and on that addendum, which changed, and I don't remember exactly, I feel like it was right around that time, because we're now almost in 2025, um, where there's a spot on that addendum that says, yes, I'm Italian when I talk, <laughs> that says, um, are there any upcoming assessments that you're aware of? Exactly. And then you have to fill that in. That doesn't mean you have to pay for them, you just have to notify the buyer, put them on notice that that's gonna happen. However, I have to say, I own properties with uh, associations and I don't always know. If they're coming. I just don't know. And it could happen after the closing. So here's what happened. It happened two weeks after the closing, the board decided to finalize an assessment. Here's the problem. And I don't know that it's a problem for her. I think it's more of a problem for due diligence because clearly if the board had finalized it two weeks after we closed, it had to be a discussion. So you want notification of the discussion before you went there? Right, but how would you find that out? You'd find that out by requesting, and, and I always say I am an expert in condos, um, but if they're obsolete, I'm not gonna be an expert in anything. Um, you yeah. find that out by requesting the last 12 months of minutes to the meetings. They uh, have to Public hold, record. No, they're not public record, mm. but you can have the listing agent requests that from the association or the owner requests it from the association. The thing is, is that back in 2023, it really wasn't a thing. 
Nobody it's, asked. Nobody asked. I ask, as soon as I get the listing, immediately, I tell the seller, I need your 12, last 12, some people might have done only, some buildings might have only done three meetings, so they're only three months of meeting minutes. So it could be like every quarter. It could be some buildings meet every month. So it's always an important thing to do when buying a condo is to ask for the last 12 months of minute meetings. And that and way you're informed. Right, so that you can provide that to the other side so that they can, you know, now that's not my job to give that to them. That's their job to request it, but I go ahead and request it and I attach it in our MLS so that you have the ability to research everything that's there. So when I bought into a country club, we'll mm -hmm. remain nameless, they <laughs> had said to me that they were ending this this loan thing that they had applied for you know the uh the, the, the thing okay, you just so talked about so they bought so they they applied for money to pay for assessment the, for, the for the clubhouse or whatever yes. yeah I know and it was coming to the end it was like two years left right mm -hmm. so in my brain i said if i buy this at the number that i got it for and this is going to disappear in two years then all of a sudden the property if i keep it up is going to explode right well, they didn't tell me, uh, less than a year later, they came out with another assessment. Of course. Wait a minute. And there's more. And then two years later, three years later, they came out with a second assessment. And here's assessment. the funnier thing. You bought an HOA. Yes. Not even a condo. No, I bought a house. You bought a house. Yes. So, but here's the thing. When you buy a house in a complex that has many amenities, like... Think about it. You have to always take in consideration. Request a copy of their budget if you buy in an association, even if it's a single family home. Request a copy of their budget because if you're buying in a golf course community, what, what has to happen every probably eight to ten years? They have to fix the golf course. They got to take the greens up. Yeah, but they, as I was there 12 years. They changed it three times. In because 12 years. Here, let me tell you what happens with golf courses. And I'm not a golf course expert, but I've seen this. They don't they try to chintz out on the grass that they pick and realize they didn't pick good grass, so they have to rip it up and put it down again. So the quality, sometimes they try to save and realize later on that it doesn't look good quickly. Now, it, should the person, the salesman, the real estate person selling me the property, representing me, the buyer, mm -hmm. um, shouldn't they give me all of this information going in because I was not said anything and you have to be interviewed mm -hmm. so even the the association did not tell me any of this information and the next thing I know I'm getting mailboxes I'm getting street lights I'm getting blacktop I'm getting piping I'm getting rotted this rotted that new golf courses and not just a golf course they had to bring in a golf pro a golf pro who got paid half of the assessment and the other half went to the grass. You're right. Went to the Wouldn't grass. you think the golf pro would get paid by the lessons that are... What? Nah. Pfft. I'm not talking about that kind of pro. I'm talking about like a guy who won the, 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 the championships. I'm talking about a real deal guy. Yeah, but what was he there for? To say that tree should go here. And because they wanted the name... Oh, so... <laughs> yes. Oh, so they named it after him. Of course. And that lasted four years. But my point to this whole story is... Somebody like you should come, when you, if, you was, if I was buying this house and you were my rep, you don't represent the property, represent me as the buyer. Well, the first thing I do is, anytime I have a client buying anything with an association, um, again, if you're buying in an association and they don't have a community pool and they don't have a clubhouse and they're not on a golf course, typically the only kind of assessment you're ever going to have is for like the front beautification of the you know, where it says the name of the community and the flowers the in gate. front. Yeah, and the gate, and the gate breaking. You can't control the gate breaking. There's nothing I can foreshadow, foresee. Just know that gates break often, and there are costs associated with that. Would you believe they redid the clubhouse three times? In 12 years? Mm-hmm. They Did tore it out, built the pool, tore it out, tore it out, tore it out. I could not believe... I didn't even use it, but I cannot believe that they did this three separate times. That's nuts, in my opinion. Now, maybe that's yeah. the way it is. 
I don't know. Because I was never informed. My whole lesson to this thing is that you should have somebody who's working with you. Because I'm sure that if you were my agent, you would tell me, Freddie, before you buy here, let me tell you what's going on. Yeah. Nobody did that. And yeah. they made you go through a process where you interview. And they granted, of course, we qualify. So you know they're not going to say no. Right. And the next thing I know, I get whiplash. My, my course went... From 1500 HOAs to $6,872. A month? A month. A month? A month. And if you don't believe me, I will show it to you. I'll blank out the name of the, of the things. I don't want to get sued, but I will show it to you. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, check my mouth is like sitting open. And then, and then, and then there's more. And that doesn't include the insurance. That went up to $24,000. And that doesn't include your mortgage. That was only 1200 yeah. bucks. You know, it's funny, you know, when I look at stuff and I'm like, oh, I always look at it like, well, how much is this going to be? Even if I didn't have a mortgage, can I retire off of this? Well, this thing almost retired me. They didn't retire off of it. I almost, I almost got retired. Now, I got to tell you, to be fair on both sides of the equation, I bought small. So large, well, you know, because I came to you. But I was at my wit's end because they kept raising these, 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 let, let's fix this and let's fix that. And then I went to the club and I said, can we get horses in here next? Because I need horse. I'm paying so much money, I should have a stable. They said, that's on the agenda. Are you kidding me? You're serious? I'm serious. I will show you the paperwork. Wow. So my whole thing to this whole story is if, if a person is going to represent you on either side, whether you're selling or you're buying, we got a good salesperson who knew the community, she knew the ins and outs, and she actually sold the property, a very smart woman. But if you're a buyer, buyer beware. Because even with the condos, now you did a show when I was last saw you here with the big muscle gentleman. Mm -hmm. Do you know that that show played all over? Max? Yes, Max's show and your show were playing in places that saw it. And some of the information he was giving, even Louise was asking questions on that show, yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Information, because interest rates are about to drop, right? Mm -hmm. So information now, and we're going to talk about, we didn't even get to the commissions, but yeah. information now is so vital, so vital if you're going to buy. And you got to have somebody who's in your corner to give you the information you need. If You probably would have told me, Fred, you got to be crazy to buy. I don't care what they're selling it for. I've, you know, it's funny, I, my cousin went to buy in one of those communities and I said to him, it was right before COVID, right? And, I, and COVID was the only time that those COVID, like right after COVID, like when that little pop happened. And I said to him, are you crazy? Like, I was like, I'd love to sell you a house, but what happens if you lose your job? Like these take forever to sell. Like n people don't want to buy these with the buy-ins and stuff like that, you know? And um, like one lady was telling me she was 80 years old and she said, yeah, I have a golf membership, but uh, they won't let me out of it because once you buy it, like they have options. You could just do social right. or social and golf. But she goes, my husband died years ago, but I'm still obligated to the golf, but I don't play golf. Yep, I yep. mean, could you imagine just wasting money? Uh, I don't have to imagine. I loved it. I didn't play golf. I ended up learning how to play golf. Freddie went with me. Linda went everybody. I, I got on a golf course with five people in a cart. And they looked at me and said, that's not the way the game is played. I says, I don't care. I'm paying so much money here. I'm taking everybody I want with me. And I picked up the game of golf. I got set to clubs and everything. I don't know what to do with it. Because I was so upset that they make you pay the golf fees, the greens. You got to pay them. In this wow. place. I mean, they get you coming and going. Now, I'm not saying, I, you're right, I probably shouldn't have done this. I should have walked away. But everybody that I did this with told me, this is a great idea. They didn't tell me the truth because they wanted the sale. And what I'm trying to express in this thing is yeah. that you tell somebody, don't do it. This is not a good idea. You give them choice. Sometimes, you know, and it's funny, then sometimes you tell somebody, don't do something, and then they go and still do it with and they else, do it. And then they come back to me. And, and they, they go, cry. I sh yeah, and I'm like, well... I don't know what to say about that. Yeah. And there's nothing you can say. You gave them the warning and everything else. But anyway, we have to talk about All right, commissions. we're going to come back and talk about commissions, but we're going to go to commercial break. So when we come back, let's talk about what is going on with this commission. Perfect. Who's paying this? Okay. 
You have been watching Making Money with Laura. For more information, contact Laura Sanders at 954-650-0827 or visit her website at thelaurasell.com. And now back to the show. Whether you're buying, selling, refinancing, or building your dream home, you have a lot riding on your loan specialist. Max Fish, a top 1% mortgage loan officer in the nation, will give you a same-day qualifying quote. Max Fish is committed to providing his customers with mortgage services that exceed their expectations, ensuring that you make the right choice for you and your family is his ultimate goal. Contact Max Fish today at 954-729-6933 or max.fisch at nwmcorp.net. At JK Closing Attorneys, we do all of the same things that a title company does, but with the benefits of being a law office. We can help with residential real estate, short sales, commercial real estate, refinances, 1031 exchanges, and FRIPTO withholding. Contact JK Closing Attorneys today at 954-332-3111. Again, that is 954-332-3111. You have been watching Making Money with Laura. For more information, contact Laura Sanders at 954-650-0827 or visit her website at thelaurasell.com. And now, back to the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Making Money with Laura Sanders, and I am your host, Laura Sanders. We're sitting here talking about real estate, and everybody's got questions about this commission. And here's the bottom line. Commission has always been negotiable. It's different in every state on how things work. I hate, I'm a New Yorker, but I hate when New Yorkers try to compare what they pay there and what they pay here. A lot of people are saying, well, I heard I don't, ha I don't have to pay a commission. Some people say it's against the law to pay a buyer's agent a commission. I'm like, no, it's not. So bottom line is, is let's just keep things the way they were. Sellers offer commissions to buyers, agents, and why get a third emotion involved in the transaction? Realistically, why do we need a third emotion? But I got to ask, if, if the commission, who sets the commission? Let's start there. There's no set commission. Okay, so it could be six, and it could that, be five, it could be four. Just saying the word set creates a lawsuit. If you say, I want to set a commission? There's no set commission. So saying that commission set is the problem. There okay. is no set commission. Commission is negotiable. End of story. So if you take me to buy a house, mm -hmm. um, and, I bought, and I'm going to buy this house, let's say, from Dorn, and X, there's a dollar on the table, shouldn't I compensate you for helping me find this house? No, Dawn should compensate me for finding you her house. So she's going to compensate you. Like for, always. Like always. And the agent that represents Dawn, or is Dawn paying you direct? No. So what happens, okay, so there's two options to that because we have two forms. Okay. We have buyer, buyer's broker. Um, Seller. Seller's broker is paying buyer's broker. Dun, dun, That's broker to way. broker. Okay. Or seller is paying buyer's broker. Okay. So then let me ask. Is it typical for the seller to pay the buyer's broker? It was always, because when you, the way our listing agreements read, or read, actually they read, our listing agreements read, you pay X commission, so let's say it's five or six percent, right? Except for I used to see companies back in like the early 2000s charging seven, eight, nine percent, and people paid it. It's different. Real estate's changed. It's really, a, it's, it's revolutionized over the years on um, back in 2004 like people didn't even know how to upload photos you'd see photos upside down you'd see no photos you just right. see listings there right then they started to put rules in place you have to have at least two photos up you know so those agents didn't know but when you it. when you go to the closing that commission money forget about the percent it's off the closing statement it's on the closing statement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the closing statement line. It says... And it's coming from the seller. Does it still say commission? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So it comes from the seller. Now, who disperses that money on the commission statement? Title company. So the title company is in control of that commission statement, of that line. Well, yeah, but it has to be approved by everyone. Right. So now the title company will ask the seller mm -hmm. how much to give to the buyer's agent. So the title company will reach out to the listing agent and say, we're, we're working on the settlement statement for XYZ house, and we want to know what is the seller paying to the buyer's broker. The seller's Actually, paying to the buyer's broker. Actually, that's how it was. Now... They have to send that buyer broker agreement over. That, uh, there's an agreement that's signed by the seller. So all they're doing really is stating the obvious. What it, was being done now is... send it with the contract. Right. But now all they're doing is itemizing the line of commission to the buyer's agent. Itemize it because every day it happened. When I was in real estate, it happened. You're in real estate. It happened. But it was an agreement. It was like a gentleman's agreement that the buyer's agent and the seller's agent got paid. It's not an agreement. It's still in writing. But it was it's an agreement. It was a gentleman agreement because th to me that's a handshake kind of thing. No, right? what I'm saying is when, we, when I went to the closing mm -hmm. table, I got paid. Yeah. I got a check. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't like like hiding it or anything else. It was done in the open by the title company. Yeah, but we're not hiding anything still. Right. But what I'm saying is that nothing's really changed except the, for the fact. More paperwork. That there's more paperwork and you're disclosing it and directly. And I have to call every time I show a property to ask them, what are they offering for commission? Before it was on the MLS. And there's no longer on the MLS. That's the dumbest thing ever. Did the MLS disappear? No, we okay. have MLS, but we can't put the commission on it, which is the dumbest. What's the difference? What's the difference? It's still negotiable. It doesn't change the fact whether or not you show it or you don't show it. So it's why do they do that? Why do they? You register now, don't you? What? You have to register the paperwork? Um, you, you have to get, so before you can show a house to a buyer, you have to get a, um, a buyer broker agreement signed from them. That's one set of paperwork that's been added to my extra paperwork. And then at the same time, we also have to get um, a, uh, another form that either gets signed by the seller or gets signed by the broker. So if the broker's paying the commission, the broker needs to sign it. If the seller's saying, then the seller has to sign it. <laughs> so it just depends on who's signing it. So, so the, uh, the bottom line to all of this nonsense, because it really sounds like, like trivial stuff, because uh, I mean, it's not trivial because there's a living involved, a uh, livelihood involved. They just want to expose what the agent for the buyer is making. But it's already exposed on the closing statement. Right, but they were exposing it because you're, you're admitting to it. You're saying, okay, this is what I'm going to get. That's the only change I see. Yeah, but like when I have now the buyers have to sign an agreement with me before I can even show them the first house, I'm putting 3% on there. Where before, a lot of times people are offering 25 and 2 So which means that if I only get 2 and a half from the from the buyers, you know, from the... Um, seller or the buyer's broker, I can technically go back to my buyer and collect another half a percent. Technic I wouldn't do that. Technically. But yeah, I could. Where before, I didn't have an agreement with my buyer. It was just a gentleman shake or a woman shake. An agree shake. agreement, yes. It was an agreement that okay, it was we want to work together. And the object of the game, why did they dis want this, this kind of disclosure? Why are they doing this? Somebody just decided, which is funny, the guy that decided, that sued, now opened up a company to do individual showings. So you could pay somebody $60 to go show you a property, and then you could pay somebody else to write the contract for you. And then that way, nobody's obligated to make commission. But that doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't make any That's no livelihood there. I so they want to get rid of all the buy. And now the seller's agents don't get affected by this? It's only the buyer's agents? So, yeah, so I go to your house, say to you, hey, Freddie, I want to list your house. And you're going to say, yeah, I want to pay you a commission. That's the seller's agent. Mm -hmm. Right, you want to pay me a commission, um, and that's just like it was before an agreement on a piece of paper, and we sign. Okay, so that doesn't change. Yeah, I have a listing coming up for $3.3 million in Hollywood, and um, definitely a property you guys all want to see. We'll do a nice party there at nighttime. Um, I have that coming up. The seller is not offering a commission, however, my answer to the agents is, is going to be go ahead and negotiate your commission into the offer. Because you're in control of a certain percentage of commission on the deal, no? No. No. Not. But my thing is, is that this, the buyer's going to be paying the, the agent, right? So make an offer. $3.3 million. We've got a lot of, there's a lot of money going on There's a lot there, of money, right? yes. 
So the commission for them, you know, is if they were getting 3%, which they won't, is like $99,000. At 3%. Right. At so, 1% is 3000 But here's the thing, $100,000 on a $3.3 million deal is not that much money. But the buyer is going to be paying that off his bottom line. So the house is going to go from 3.3 to 3.4? No. It's not going to sell for 3.3. Well, whatever the deal is. I don't think it would. So you're going to have to, ne like anything. But, but you my question is, I know, but my question <laughs> is, do they put it in the sale price? You or can. No? You, you can. can. You could say, I'm giving you this offer, but that's with you paying commission or Correct. write a, s a lower number and you pay your agent directly. Oh, the difference here is usually yeah. those million dollar deals are cash deals anyway, but right. if it that's was 300,000. I'm not worried about taking that listing. On that one. But right. on 300,000. On the other ones, I'm like, absolutely not. So. But a three hundred thousand dollar deal, you may want to finance that deal, put it into what you're asking the bank for money if you're doing it that way. That's true. I'm and just I, saying. And I think you can do that. So, if you're thinking about buying or selling, give me a call, Laura Sanders, Remax Direct, nine five four six five zero zero eight two seven. God, that went fast tonight. And uh, till next week, have a great night. Don't make a move without me. Thank you for tuning in for Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. To join the conversation, call us at the studio, 888-994-4995-STUDIO-8, or contact Laura directly at 954-650-0827. Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. We look forward to seeing you next week.